Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here. Welcome back to another Monster Hunter World video. Finally, finally, we have some nice, crisp 1080p high definition gameplay to look at. Capcom just uploaded a new video, this time it's in English, and while the gameplay itself is largely similar to what we've seen already, it does at least give us a chance to look at some more things in greater detail. In fact, this gameplay plays out a little differently to what you guys would have seen on the Japanese livestream. This one is a solo hunt, so there's a palico alongside the hunter to help out, and while Rathalos does show his face, the focus in this demo is on hunting Anjanath. So things do play out a little differently, and it just goes to show how each time you see this quest, things are never quite the same the next time around. However, to manage expectations, this is still the ancient forest, the weapons being used are still great sword and heavy bowgun, and the monsters are still the same. And in truth, I feel like we're going to be seeing a lot of this demo over the next couple of months. If I had to hazard a guess, I'd say this is more than likely what will be playable at Gamescom. So while I appreciate a lot of you, myself included, want to see new monsters, maps, weapons, everything really, we're just going to have to work with what we've got for the time being. I imagine TGS might be the first time they show something new, but again, at this stage, we just don't know. Either way, that aside, this gameplay is actually pretty exciting because during the segment where they go back to the base camp and swap weapons and gear, we actually get a look at the complete set of Andronath armor for both the Hunter and the Palico, and thanks to the gameplay being in English and also 1080p and not a compressed 720p Japanese livestream, we're able to take a closer look at the UI and some of the armor and weapon skills. So, in this video, I'm going to dive a little bit deeper on that front and analyze what we have, whilst also showing you some of the gameplay as well. Of course, if you do enjoy this, then a like would be super appreciated, and be sure to comment down below and let me know what you guys think. So first up, let's kick things off quite simply with the armor. This right here is full Hunter and Palico and Janath gear. To those of you perhaps new to the Monster Hunter series, this is why we hunt. You hunt large monsters, carve them up and make new armor and weapons out of their body parts, and use this new gear to go and hunt bigger monsters and repeat the cycle. As such, getting to see a complete set of armor from a new monster that we've seen a fair bit is pretty exciting. For the veteran hunters out there, I get a distinct Rathian and sort of Gypsaros vibe from this gear. Don't know about you, let me know what you guys think. But either way, still pretty sweet. I also love how the Palico gear basically has a mini Anjanath skull as a helmet. Now, if we rewind things for a little bit and go to just before the armor was equipped and when they were scrolling through the menus, there are a few interesting things that I want to highlight here. So let's start with the weapons. First things first, on the right, before you hover over any items, this is your character summary. Your attack, sharpness, affinity, element, and your various defenses. There are also a few more pages, which they don't scroll through, but going off of previous Monster Hunter games, it's more than likely a more in-depth look at, say, your armor pieces, your armor skills, and all that jazz. However, on top of that, rather interestingly and new to the series, is this mention of a weapon type bonus. In this case, physical damage is lessened. However, if you fast forward to the point where the heavy bowgun is equipped, then that changes to elemental damage is lessened. Now, whether this is fixed per weapon type or whether there are variations on this, I honestly have no idea. In truth, I don't really know how this will play out at all, but it clearly changes based on the weapon that is equipped. So if this is a thing, then it'll be interesting to see what the other weapons get. Perhaps it's a little bit more, say, basic or binary, and it's just difference between, say, Blade Master and Gunner weapons. If you have a melee weapon, maybe you have reduced physical damage because you're up close fighting the monster and you're more likely to get hit by things like tail whips or stomps. Meanwhile, gunners have, say, reduced elemental damage because they are perhaps more than likely to be hit by things like fireballs or shock blasts being further away. Again, I don't really know, but it's food for thought. Of course, going back a little bit from there, we then get a look at a few more weapon elements. We've already seen thunder and fire in action, but here we also see water and poison. Poison being an abnormal status effect that usually sits alongside sleep and paralysis. I imagine we're going to see all the usual elements back, especially when you consider that there are defenses for Ice and Dragon 2, but I just wanted to point out what we've seen thus far. You'll also notice that when looking at the special ammo type for the Heavy Bowgun, that Gatling Fire we saw before is in fact a special ammo type, something that is supported by this particular Bowgun. So as we saw in the Japanese gameplay, it's something that needs to be loaded and you then fire out until it's finished. You'll also notice the option for custom mods for the Bogon. Again, going by previous Monster Hunter games, this is likely some sort of sight to allow for better zoom and also barrel attachments. Furthermore, hovering over the weapons, there's this option to play a movie down below. Now, Monster Hunter Online had this, so assuming it's something similar, then it's likely a mini tutorial that lets you kind of watch the weapon in action, perhaps teaches you a few of the basic moves, things like that. Now moving on from weapons to armor, this is something interesting that I want to speak about, the way in which armor skills appear to be working a little differently. When selecting this Anjanath helmet, you can see the usual stuff once again, resistances, the level, the rarity, defense, slots, although this one doesn't have any slots, but down below you also have skills. Now the helmet in this instance has an attack boost, and the first block is colored in yellow, 
but there are also seven blocks in total and on the right side it says level one. Now again, for those of you that are new to the series, the way in which armor skills in Monster Hunter typically work is that you need to meet a certain threshold before it becomes active. Let's take a stat like attack up. Each piece of armor has a value on it. It might be like two in attack up, three in attack up. And then when you put the whole set on, those values add up to a total. If that total hits or exceeds 10 points, the skill becomes active. If it's below that, it's inactive. And if you hit higher thresholds, usually 15, 20, and in some rare cases, 25, you can then get higher tier thresholds, i.e. in the case of attack up, this is the difference between attack up small, medium, large, etc. Now, what caught my eye in this gameplay is that it seems to work a little differently, at least based on the numbers and the UI. It is, however, worth calling out that it's often very hard to try and read numbers and stats like this in demo builds because the numbers are often different than that which we'd expect in the final game. Take any Monster Hunter demo that they've ever released. The armor skills in the demo sets are always drastically different to what we actually see in the final thing. So this could all be completely wrong, but hear me out for a moment. In this instance, before the Anjanath armor is equipped, we have the heavy bowgun and our attack is 155. Now, if we play this out to the point where the Anjanath helmet is equipped and the old armor remains, you'll see the attack stat jump from 155 to 159. Now, as a reminder, the Anjanath helmet had what appears to be one block in the attack boost. Moving further forward, when swapping out the chest piece, that then drops back down to 155, which I can only assume means that perhaps the previous chest piece had an attack boost on as well. Meanwhile, the Anjanath chest had fire damage instead, but then when throwing the waist back on, that also jumps back up to 159 because it also had an attack boost. Now again, to reiterate, this could just be discrepancies in the demo, and this is by no means conclusive, but if attack values can jump with just one piece of armor being equipped and unequipped, could this also mean an alteration to the way in which skills work? The fact that they have level one next to them and seven potential blocks in the case of attack, are we looking at a more percentage-based threshold like level one, two, three, four, etc.? Does that mean to say we could put on one piece of armor with an attack boost stat and then actually benefit from it without having to hit, say, the 10 point threshold that we've become used to? Alternatively, however, if the system is the way we've always known it, and this is perhaps more exciting, maybe this UI is instead simply a more user-friendly method to tell people where they are on the way to skill activation. I mean, if you're new, then the skill system can be a little confusing. So if it were simply a means to track how, say, close we were to hitting the 10 points or 15 points, that could be sweet. Either way, let me know what you guys think down below. Hopefully, when I go hands-on with this at Gamescom, I'll be able to dig a little bit deeper and try and get some answers. Of course, moving on from there, we then see the mantles here. This is the challenger mantle I spoke about that draws the monster's attention. The Rocksteady Mantle to remove certain reactions to effects, and of course the Gilly Mantle too. And finally, of course, we get to see the Palico gear. You'll also notice down below that it has an item, the Palico's carrying an item called the Vigor Wasp Spray. Now this, I'm going to assume, is the Palico's way of healing potentially us, or maybe itself. Vigor Wasps are these insects you'll find around the map with these big green sort of jelly bellies. They are insects that we can interact with and if you do grab it, you can effectively get an environmental mega potion. If you're running around and you're running away from a monster and you don't have the time to say scroll through your menu and heal, if you see one of these and grab them, it is an instant health refresh, which is really useful. Of course, they're only going to be limited of them, so you can't necessarily use them all the time, nor will they necessarily always respawn. And of course, if you're playing as a team, you probably want to communicate and don't just steal it from your teammate who needs their health. But either way, they are there, so I'm going to imagine in this situation, the Palico carrying a Vigor Wasp spray is probably a healing spray. But that, my friends, is pretty much it for the time being. I want to focus mainly on the camp and the armor stuff today. I will be going through the remainder of the gameplay with a fine tooth comb as always, so expect a follow-up video at some point soon if there's anything else worth talking about. But until then, let me know your thoughts down below. I'm going to leave you with just a little bit more gameplay to round up the hunt since it's pretty awesome seeing it in high def. And as always, keep it locked for much more from Monster Hunter World. I'm actually going to be at Gamescom next month, so I will 100% be going hands-on with the game. I'm unsure just yet whether I can record or not, but regardless, I will do my best to go hands-on with all 14 weapons and try and report back as much as possible. So if you don't want to miss anything, then you are in the right place. Thanks again for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.
The rock steady mantle allows our hunter to keep a steady hand whilst firing at the monster. to now shrug off ferocious attacks, it's time for the hunter to unleash some payback with a powerful wyvern ammo. And there it is! Quest complete and a job well done. All right, you completed the quest. Congrats! Now we can harvest precious materials from the monsters and use those to gear up for our next challenge.